Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Soulcaster. I am Michael Seven Michael. That's right, you're watching Soulcaster, everything having to do with the journey, using spiritual implements, faith, um, politics, social justice, and the artist, the entrepreneur journey. Most important, the journey. And we have with us in studio the lovely, the talented, <laughs> the businesswoman. Oh my goodness, so many titles. Vicky Maya, how you doing? Peace. How is everything? Everything is everything. Now, this is our second thing thing. thing so, thing, if you want to see part one, check that out. <laughs> this is part two. We're going to talk about economic growth. Yes. Thought. We're going to talk about the work that you do with people, mm -hmm. trying to get them in the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Now, before we started, you said there were some really interesting. Mm -hmm. This might be a good place to start. Some people view money mm -hmm. and spending it like they're losing it and they're never getting to get it back. Yes. Explain that. What, what were you thinking when you said that? So there are laws of abundance. I feel like money is spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like in the spiritual community, a mm -hmm. lot of us look at money as ill currency or mm -hmm. low frequency, mm -hmm. um, which it is the lowest frequency of energetic exchange. However, mm -hmm. it is how we eat and we pay bills and we live and keep mm -hmm. clothing and food. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just all the structure. And buy instruments. Yes, and buy instruments and <laughs> studio time and pay your mixers and masters. So, <laughs> yes, we need the cash money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and yes, we need preach. To, <laughs> we need to look at the money as if it is... um not uh dirty or bad a lot mm -hmm. of us are like oh these rich people and their money and the new but it's like at the end of the day <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone's entitled to whatever it is that they earn you mm -hmm. know um and so a lot of us are i feel like we come from impoverished mind states mm -hmm. um where our parents or our, more so likely our parents parents mm -hmm. were like well this is what it is life isn't fair and so we kind of like pass that on to our children. Mm -hmm. And so when you see a kid in the store and they're like, mom, I want this doll. And you're like, that's too expensive. And it's like in that instant right there, that child is now being uh, put into a box in a perspective that they'll probably carry for the rest of their life mm -hmm. as this is something that I cannot afford. Um, and I feel like we should never express that to ourselves let alone to children or the youth or people who are even our friends you can't afford that or you know what i mean there is a, there is there is a way to be responsible now i'm saying if you can't financially make it into a forty thousand dollar car well, well, but wait a minute <laughs> little jimmy little jimmy this apartment's really small mm -hmm. he's real tight on rent yeah but little jimmy got a really nice car okay I mean, wouldn't that be responsible? Be like, Jimmy, you really can't afford that car because the other aspects of your life are like. Are um, yes, and I feel like that is ill advice. Like you know? that, that's um something that a lot of people I feel like we still do out of our impoverished mind state. <laughs> so right. I feel like the show. The show is another mm -hmm. part of the impoverished mind state is right. um having a thirty thousand dollar watch on and taking the train. Right. Um, for me, it's like you know, I'm not saying you can't do both, mm -hmm. uh, but it just it just says something about your priorities <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you work with artists, how does this translate? Because that's just a general thing for anybody. Yeah. But specifically, how does this work with artists when you work with them? And so, them? so when I'm working with my peers, I'm working with other people who are looking to build the kind mm -hmm. of uh, structure that I'm looking to build, which is generational wealth for real. Mm -hmm. um, uh, being able to implement structure in community that will outlast my lifetime. Um, and that will take billions of dollars. And so mm -hmm. it's not an easy feat, and it's not something that you should ever look at as impossible because I feel like if a uh, 10 year old me, impoverished mind state me, was being told that one day I would be a billionaire. I would be like, mm, I don't know about that. That sounds crazy. And you can tell me now, uh, you can be a trillionaire, and I would believe it because I am abundant and I'm capable of honing into that abundant energy regardless of what I have now. 
regardless of what I spend, regardless of what I make, um, it always comes back. And as long as I apply the, the laws of, of abundance, and as long as I apply my spiritual intake and outtake of money, mm -hmm. I'm set. Um, okay. And it's always a journey because you're always being tested. And I feel right. like the more money you're about to make, the more you get tested, um, especially when you're building your own wealth. A lot of people with wealth right now have wealth that their parents gave to them or was just they inherited. And um, I did not have the... The, the leisure of that in my life. Right. Um, when I lost both of my parents and my house, I barely made anything. I made enough to get me into another home. So um, that, you know, that in itself was is a frustrating thought. Is like right. my parents worked their entire life for me to just have one apartment right now. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. And I'm so grateful for it because it's beautiful and it's everything I could have ever dreamed of. Right. Um, however... It's a common story in New York. Yeah. It's not rare. In fact, um, there's a lot of stories. They end up like a, a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, and yeah. it's just it's nuts because it's just like, what are, what are people working for? Mm -hmm. And it's like people really sit there and they spend their entire lives, their whole time. Now wait a minute. Let me, let me throw something out there. See ya. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first of all, there are a lot of uh, let's say let's stay with music. Mm -hmm. Oh, my artist, listen to my demo. Right. You're already lost. Okay. Straight out the gate. Right. No such thing as a demo anymore. Yeah, yeah. So once you start with that, that's a little trick, ladies and gentlemen. You walk up to a producer and say, this is my demo, you're already lost. Yeah. No such thing as it. You, you, you got to do it, make it happen. What advice would you give for specifically music artists that are like, well, what am I going to do? I, my, maybe I don't have much or I don't have the contacts or... I have money, but I don't know what to do with it. What um, would you say? So my thing is, is mm. time is energy, right? Okay. Uh, when you are investing a lot of your time in a nine to five or even a part time job, mm -hmm. um, you are investing energy. You're you're thinking. You're being crucial. You're you're thinking about how you're moving. You're actually a lot more aware in this scenario than you are when you're working for yourself, which you are as soon as you leave work. Okay. Um, as a as a musician, I feel like you are your own PR for a certain amount of time. You mm. are your own um, manager. You are your own financial advisor. You are your own everything at this point. And mm. it is very frustrating to have to split that amount of time with another kind of job, another kind of energy. Oops. <laughs> we got you. We got you. We got you, guys. <laughs> no, but that is true. That is very. That is that is the challenge, right? Yes. To split the energy. Um, so then would you... I would recommend that people invest 100% of their time into their business. Okay. If you are a singer, a rapper, or any kind of musician, mm -hmm. you are the CEO of a company that has no workers, which means you should be doing... Uh, 24 hour work days and you can't do a 24 hour work shift when you are <laughs> working for fucking like what what are people making now like $15 an hour mm. um, yeah or if, minus taxes <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so so even if you are making about that much it it's it's not worth it um, even if you are making like twenty-five to a hundred dollars an hour, it's not worth it when you have another career. Um, I've been seeing this a lot. But wait a minute, I got uh, maybe I'm married, maybe I have a kid. Oh, well, you have children, um, That's and a maybe you know whatever the situation. But even if you don't, I got bills to pay. Right. So I got to do that nine to five. Right. Then, well, then what do I do? Like, do I go uh, to the do I, do I go to the open mics? Do I try to build a team? Do I you get a manager? Build. So I feel like, like if you're what do I do? if you're not in the position to automatically demand money for your performances, mm -hmm. build. Build footage, build structure, build social media. Mm -hmm. Show people I have value. Show people what your value is. Even if you have to show it off for free for a little while, do open mics or do whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Invite people out. Like I said, get a lot of footage. Make sure that you leave a footprint in whatever it is that you're doing. And then you'll be able to say, hey, this is what I can do to you when you go to a club and say, hey, I'm going to perform here. Or someone is booking you for a show. Um, if they're booking, this is advice, if they are booking you <laughs> for a show, right, right, there right. is a budget. You right. are just not asking for it. 
<laughs> there is a budget for every artist for every show regardless of how cheap or how well put together or poorly put together it is there's always a budget mm. because it takes money in order to put these events together wow. so when they're hiring a uh, artist like like me for instance if they're hiring me to do the show they mm. like what I they see my value already they, they right. came to me um, I now have leverage over them as a person who's providing a service for your event Right. You have to pay me for my time, and you have to figure out what your time is worth. If you have bills, if you have things to pay, mm. you gotta figure out how to incorporate that into your value. Gotcha. Um, and so, if you have to make, uh, let's say, my, my rent right now is two thousand fifty dollars, right? And I have one other person living with me, and so uh, that plus food, plus Uber rides and random things that pop up. Mm. Um, Comf to live as really really comfortable. Right. I should be making around seven thousand to eight to ten thousand dollars on my own, um, just to live the way that I want to. Right. And um, it's interesting that once I started to prepare for that and started to work that into my price, that I'm slowly but surely making into that with just music. Um, right. So. You know, it doesn't. It's not something that happens overnight, but mm. it doesn't start with you working and putting all your time into making somebody else rich ever. It just never happens like that. Wow. And I, I hate to break it down mm. like that, but I quit my job three years ago. Right. Um, I was a hairstylist in a salon, mm. and uh, I haven't worked in a nine to five like payroll mm. situation in a very long time. Um, I do what I do. I have a lot of different hustles, and I know not a lot of people are that talented or can like focus on so many different things and right. be lucrative with their hands. However, if you are a musician or you any kind of artist, don't treat your form of art like a side hoe. <laughs> like, right. like it's not everything. <laughs> like, you want to marry this thing. You right. don't want to be like, oh, well, I'm going to put all my energy and all my love into something else. Right. Because that eventually will, that, sh that ship will sail. You know, music is, is a jealous girlfriend. She's like, listen, if you don't give me everything, mm -hmm. I don't want you. Wow. So. <laughs> dun, dun. Da, 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 da. <laughs> There's a lot of people who might just say that just for life. <laughs> That's super interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do people connect with you to hear more of, you know, your thoughts and your experiences so, in reference to economic building? How does, so, how does um, that work? So a lot of what I do is geared towards women. Um, okay. I do do integrated um workshops with men and women but for right now i'm focusing on a group called healing hiatus mm -hmm. which is a social media and a website mm -hmm. so you can find everything at healing hiatus healing hiatus.com mm -hmm. healing hiatus on instagram okay. um and basically it's a community of women um all over the world mm -hmm. um mainly based out of here in nyc but um women everywhere who are healers entrepreneurs musicians creatives um, looking to be able to present their their gifts and be able to um, help one another build in this community and um, make make each other money make each other cool. uh, friends right. uh, give each other support system emotionally financially right. and um, I'm hoping to build a very tight-knit but large community eventually mm -hmm. with yeah. um, with me as a brand <laughs> awesome well, yeah. thank you so much for adding that, because I thought this was really important just to share that with people. Thank you. Um, cause, um, and I like the fact that you mentioned the support, because there's the physical, you know, money exchange energy. Yeah. But it's that, that desire, that passion, and that support of that passion to keep you going. Yeah. That's super important as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, what is your social media? Let's put this up there. It's, right back. it's at Nikki underscore not. Awesome. So that's that. And that's not you. That's me. Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're watching Soulcaster. And, um, yeah, any, anybody that you think we should be interviewing, definitely hit us up. And again, thank you so much for coming. And you're always welcome to come by. Okay. If you, if you got any pieces or something <laughs> yes. that you want to highlight or something, mm. you know, with the, uh, like actually show, show the folks that really quick while we get the music pumping up.
<laughs> cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Soulcaster.